Hey everybody, it looks like we cut out again. And I may even have this upside down. Let's get it turned around. It really, it totally booted me out of there this time. So sorry about that. I'm gonna give everybody a minute or two to find us back here again. Um, let's see, I need to back out myself. Darn it, hate it when that happens. But you know what? We're blessed to have the opportunity to do stuff like this anyway. So um, I'm just going to be grateful that I'm able to come back in and do, do this all over, pick up where we left off. Okay, there we go. And it looks like someone has found us, We're waiting for a couple people to join us back here again. Okay, so we've got about a couple of people back. Thanks for coming back in, guys. Give everybody just a minute and then we'll move forward here. Do a little cleanup while we're waiting. There we go, John's back, hello, John. Okay, so anyway, uh, let me tell you about this card that I was making, we'll get going here. So I just took this big die and I cut it out of a sheet of the Calypso coral and then laid that piece over my brushed metal or the dry brushed metallic designer series paper. Isn't that awesome? Then, you know, wrapped a little bit of ribbon around it and um, that's the inside. Another one of the dies from the set. And that's how I made that card. Kind of fun, right? Okay, let's go ahead and move on to the next one. And this next card is another one where um, they came in the pack where I was challenged to um, come up with a couple cards using the new designer series paper. And this one was using the rainy, oh, what did they call it? Let me see here, hang on. It's called Rain or Shine. And I used a lot of the different papers in here. Let me show it to you. Ooh, ooh. Um, but there's some really fun papers in here and I don't know if you can see it very well on the camera but it's almost like this some of the stuff like the raindrops are embossed so you get a little bit of a shine on there there's a little bit of texture um I don't know if you can see it on here but there's some really pretty prints look at that and it goes with that stamp set that I love so much that we're going to use here um where is that stamp set? I must have accidentally put it away. Uh, it's called Playing in the Rain. But just there's lots of fun little patterns here in this pack. And this is in the new January through April mini catalog. Oh, good. Lots of people are finding us again. Yes, Teresa, it really is cute. I think this whole suite of products is adorable. I love it. You, you, Those of you who've watched me for several weeks know I've been using it. Quite a bit because I just love it. I think it's so sweet. Okay, the stamps. I put them away. Hang on. So it's these stamps playing in the rain, and you've got the fox and the turtle and the bunny. And for um, this card, actually, we're going to use. Let's see here. We're going to be using the turtle. So here's, okay, here is the stamp set. There is a coordinating pack of dies, but I didn't use them with this card. We're gonna be using the flower. We're also gonna be using the turtle, the clouds. And then this stamp, thanks, comes from the Biggest Wish stamp set. And then the Something Fancy dies. This is a standalone die set. It doesn't specifically coordinate with any stamps. And I love it because you can do tags, all different shapes and sizes. So let's get going on this card. And of course I do have, like the last one, I have a couple of extra samples to show you when we're all done here. So look at this. Did the little clouds on my envelope. And then, isn't he adorable? I just love him. That's the inside. And this is another little fun fold. So let me show you how we're doing that. Let's start with our envelope. OK. 
Okay. Now what we're gonna do is put just a little piece of scrap paper behind the flap. And I took a one of our blending brushes and the Balmy Blue ink. That's right, John. This um, paper is out of stock for a couple of weeks, but it'll be back. It's, it's just super, super popular um, because it's so adorable. Okay, so I'm getting a little bit of ink here. Tap off the extra. And then I'm just kind of lightly going over the flap of my envelope. And I'm not trying to get any kind of a consistency. I want it to be, um, see how it, it kind of naturally looks like the sky because there's little white bits and some darker blue and lighter blue. And, and that's what I'm shooting for. So I'm just gonna go over it one more time just to give it a little bit more color. There we go. Get some of the extra ink off of that. And then I'm gonna use the Balmy Blue ink again with the clouds. And I'm just gonna kind of randomly stamp them. There. So now we have some clouds in the beautiful blue sky. Cleaning off my stamp here. You can probably hear the squeak, squeak, squeak of the uh, chamois. Okay, now I'm going to put this ink away so I don't do any sort of damage. And then move my envelope out of the way. Let's do our stamping now. So I have the little tag that I cut out of those um, something fancy dies. I also have a little strip of um, Mango Melody. It was escaping me there for a moment. And I'm going to stamp my sentiment onto the piece of Mango Melody. And I'm just going to put it right in the center there. I'm going to fussy cut it out like we did with the other card. There. And then we're also going to stamp the turtle. Whoops. That doesn't work very well, just so you know. Okay. And I'm going to stamp it just a little bit lower than um, the center of my tag. Ta-da. Nada. And then I also have a piece here of basic white. And this piece of basic white is five and a quarter by four inches. And then what I did is I trimmed off a 16th of an inch off this edge. And I'm gonna show you why in just a minute. So it's really um, three and 15 sixteenths. And I'm gonna stamp these little flowers in the lower corner. put away the ink pad so it doesn't dry out and so I don't lay down in it. And then I have a whole bunch of my stamp and blend markers. Don't be intimidated by the number of them I have. Um, okay, so first I'm gonna take my, daff my dark Daffodil Delight and I'm coloring in the centers of the flowers. And he has a little flower, so we'll color that one too. And then I took the, I'm gonna use the dark um, granny apple green. And I'm gonna do the leaves of the flowers. And I chose to keep the flowers white because the designer series paper, the, the design that we're gonna use on the paper has white daisies so i wanted this to kind of mimic that oops i almost colored in the okay he doesn't have leaves okay 
let's go ahead and let's go ahead and start putting the card together just so we can put some of these yeah let's color first let's color okay so for for his shell let's start with his shell i took the mossy meadow yep i've got light and dark mossy meadow i have the light and dark garden or granny apple green and then i also have the light and dark old olive okay and what i'm going to do here is i'm going to use the light old olive first actually i'm going to start with the dark and i'm going to go around the edges of these little things, I don't know what you call them. Hey Cheryl, welcome. Now I'm gonna take the light garden green, or not garden green, um, old olive. I don't know what my deal is tonight. Oops. And I'm going to try to blend these in a little bit. the dark mossy meadow and I just gave little bits of accent in some spots but not all see like I didn't go all the way around like I did with the um, dark old olive now I'm going to take the light old olive again just to try to blend that in a tiny little bit And then remember, you know, as it sits and it absorbs into the paper a little bit, it'll blend a little as well. There we go. So now we have his shell done, because I'm gonna leave the rest of that, that white. So now I'm gonna take my granny apple, actually for his, um, for this part of the shell, we're gonna use the old olive. We're gonna do the same thing as we did for the back of his shell. So I'm gonna take the dark and go along these lines here where there's the marks that Stampin' Up! has put in for us. Okay. Now I'm going to take my light old olive. And we're essentially doing what we did on those little spots on his shell, where I did the dark around the edge, fill in with the light. Then we're going to add just a little bit of accent with the dark mossy meadow. Doing little circles kind of brings out that color so that they blend just a little bit better. Now we're just going to add little accents of the dark. I go there, there, maybe a little under his arm. There we go. Come back in with the light, light old olive, just to kind of blend those in a little bit. And then we're just gonna let it absorb and do its own magic while we color the rest of his body. I've got the dark and light granny apple green, so we'll start with the dark. Go around his little head. And his little arms.
and his feet. Now we're going to go over it with the light. Blending in, in those spots along the edge. I really like the Stampin' Blends. You know, you don't get the streaking like you get with a lot of other markers. And that has to do with the alcohol ink, I believe. Isn't he adorable? Now, at the moment, he's kind of floating in thin air, right? So I'm going to take, I have my light smoky slate. No, I'm sorry, this is light gray granite. I'm going to use my brush tip for this. And I'm just creating a little bit of a shadow beneath him. And if that is too stark for you, you can take the color lifter and just go over it a little bit over the edges and it'll blend it in a little bit. See how it's drawing out that edge, that color around the edge? So it looks a little bit more like a shadow. Now let's put our card together. Oh wait, our little fun fold. We need to cut out our thanks, our sentiment. So we'll cut this out. Another tip I can give you for fussy cutting, cut off the excess. Um, you know, in this case, I made my little strip that I stamped on really just slightly bigger than my stamped image because when you have too much paper that you're working with in your hand and you're trying to work through, it just gets in the way. So, so if you need to trim around your stamped image so that you're working with a smaller piece of paper, I definitely recommend doing that. Flip it around. My fireplace just turned off. It's an electric fireplace. Just turned off and all of a sudden it just seems so quiet in here. Okay. By the way, you have until March 10th to sign up for the next Paper Pumpkin kit, and it's gonna be the 10th anniversary of Paper Pumpkin. So they are putting an extra gift inside. I believe it's an extra stamp set. If you're unfamiliar with Paper Pumpkin, it's our monthly subscription service. You can sign up for just one month and try it. Or you can sign up for three, six, or 12 months. And um, every month you get the box with all the supplies you need, except for scissors, to put together all the cards. And then when I get mine, I do a um, video on a Saturday. I let you know it's coming up. And I do a video of alternate ideas of things you can make with your kit. Okay, so we have all our little pieces together. Are you guys ready? This is such a cool, fun fold and so easy to do. So here's our designer series paper. Remember I talked about those little white daisies? And what you're gonna do is cut it down to be where it's um, five and a quarter going this way. And then you're gonna score, over here I did one and a quarter inches. I think it was one and a quarter. Yeah, but I could have done one and a half. I'll show you why. I initially meant for this piece over here to do the score line a half an inch, <clears throat> excuse me, half an inch from the edge. But then I ended up with two, it was too long over here. It didn't size right. So I had to do an extra bit there. So I've actually got my score three quarters of an inch from this edge. So it's up to you. Um, you could do three quarters of an inch here and one and a quarter inches here. Or you could do a half an inch and one and a half inches. Either way, you want a total of two inches off of the two sides, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold that side over. Oh, see, I cut through. That's not good. Um, if you're a little aggressive with your scoring blade, that can happen. And 
and then and fold that to the back. This one you're going to fold to the front. Notice that with um, both of uh, two cards tonight, I'm utilizing both sides of the same sheet of designer series paper. So don't forget that you can do that. It's not always a matter of having to choose between two truly lovely sides. Okay, so we have that. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that inside piece and I'm gonna glue it right to the inside of my card here. This is why I cut, remember when I said I cut off a 16th of an inch on this side? It's because it does take up a little bit of your paper, that little fold and folding around that piece of white. And so if you don't cut off that 1 16th of an inch, your white sticks out just a little bit. So if you take off that 16th of an inch, you're good to go. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just run my adhesive all the way down. Set this in here. Oops, not quite ready for you to lay down yet. So I wanna line it up. Just like so. Sticks up a little bit there, but you know what? I know how to use scissors. I'll just trim that little tiny bit. There we go. Okay, so that's how the main body of our card works. See, and that's how our card's gonna open up. But remember, it's gonna be a little flimsy because it's designer series paper, right? So I made, just like the first card, a quarter of a sheet. It's five and a half by four and a quarter, and we're just gonna mount this right onto there. I wish that wasn't torn, that's too bad. Oh well, okay. So we're gonna glue that down. And now I have these two little strips. These are just half an inch by five and a quarter. And we're gonna layer them behind the edge here just to have this pop a little bit. Let me show you how to do this, super duper easy. So first I'm gonna take the Mango Melody. Oh, I can't remember. I, I always get Mango Melody and um, Melon Mambo, the names mixed up. I don't know why, they're entirely different colors. Put a little bit of glue along that edge. And then I'm gonna line it up here. I just want probably like an eighth of an inch sticking out. Like so. Then I'm gonna do the same thing with my granny apple green. And then again, have it stick out about an eighth of an inch. Just like that. Now let's start piecing this guy together. So first I'm gonna take my little turtle friend and I'm gonna put, I've got little strips left over from before when I've used my um, adhesive sheet, foam adhesive sheets. And so I'm just gonna piece these on here. No sense letting them go to waste, right? And I'm only going to put adhesive, or put the foam on one side. And the reason for that is because it is um, gonna be over this piece. It's already raised a little bit. Um, so it makes it lay funny if you put adhesive, or if you put the foam on both sides. I don't really want that to, oh, that would fit right in there. Ah, oh, look at that, you guys, right like so. Okay, so now we're gonna peel off the back. Maybe, and lay it right about there. And then I'm gonna take my little thanks.
and just put it right there at an angle over his head. If you wanted to put a little dimensional under that T, you could, and I think I'm going to. Um, only I'm not gonna use a dimensional. You wanna use the same type of foam, whatever you used before. So if I'd used dimensionals before, I would use dimensionals now because they do have a little bit of a difference in the thickness and it can sometimes look sort of weird. So I'm just gonna lift that up. Oh, that's a little big, I think. That's gonna work, okay. There we go, there we go. Except I don't want it on my little label there. It's a little bit big. Just trim off a bit and we're good to go. Ta -da! And that was your musical interlude for the evening. And we have card number three. So cute, so cute. And you get to see the back side of your designer series paper there. So you're getting to utilize both sides. Now I have a couple more cards that I used this paper with. So let's clean up a little bit here and then we'll take a look at what those cards look like. And then we will look over everything we made tonight, see what you think. If you enjoyed what you saw tonight, I would love it if you'd give me some likes, some thumbs up. If you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe. You, um, If you click on the little bell icon, you'll get notifications when I upload new videos. And I always go in and upload this video to YouTube when we're done. Um, so if you miss it, you can watch the replay either on YouTube or here on Facebook. Okay, so the additional cards I made, I've got this one. There's my little envelope, another belly band. And this is a gate fold, but usually a gate fold opens this way. I turned it on its side and it opens this way. And the cool thing about this is look, now it stands on its own so somebody could set it up on their desk if they wanted to. So that's that card. Let's put that belly band back on there. Made my band just a little bit tight. So we have that card and then this one. I really liked the simplicity of this one. Use the Forever Fern dies and then Actually, I think it's yeah, oh, Forever Florum. I don't know. Anyway, um, a little bit of our crinkle ribbon. Just very simple. But I liked the simplicity of this one. So those are all the cards that I've got for you tonight. Let's clean up here and just take another look at everything because I, I showed you guys so much tonight. So there's this one and this one. And this one that I used the rain, what's it called again? Rain or Shine designer series paper. Then I have this one and this one. And then the one we made together, this one with the lattice that I used the dry brushed metallic designer series paper. And then this one where it was the um, a wash in beauty. So we got a lot done tonight, didn't we? Well, we didn't make them all tonight, but I hope you guys enjoyed everything that I had for you tonight. I sure enjoyed spending the time with you. Um, if you would like to order some products, help me reach my goals for this celebration campaign that ends in a week. I would love to earn your business. You can order at my website, heathersides.stampinup.net. In addition to all the free gifts you get from Stampin' Up! for celebration, when your order's over $75, I will send you um, your own uh, adhesive eraser. You can also email me if you have any questions, comments, concerns, ideas, anything like that. You can email me at stamphappenings at gmail.com or send me a message here on Facebook. If you do place an order first in advance, I'd like to thank you very, very much. Please use this host code if your order is 
under $150. This host code helps me to um, provide, continue to provide these videos for free. It helps with my supplies and my, my prizes and things like that. But if your order is over $150, please do not use the code. If, you, if your order is over $150, you're going to have additional gifts coming to you from Stampin' Up! In addition to your celebration gifts, I want to make sure that you're the one who gets those gifts. So don't use the code if your order is over $150. So thank you guys for joining me tonight. I should be getting my paper pumpkin kit here pretty soon. So be watching for um, me to post that I will be going live doing my uh, paper pumpkin kit alternate ideas with the February kit. Again, I hope you guys had a great time. I know I did. Thank you guys for all the great comments and compliments. I will see you guys next Wednesday, same time, same place, 6 p.m. Pacific time here on Facebook.